Hey, it's Kitchen Speak and I'm Dominique. Um, here today we're going to be talking about the infamous kitchen triangle. So, what is the kitchen triangle? It was developed in the 1940s by researchers who were developing ways to streamline production flow in factories. They decided to take the concept of automation to the family home by strategically placing appliances in a format that would help the housewife in her domestic duties. Very thoughtful of them, don't you think? <laughs> The principle of the kitchen triangle was the relationship between the cooktop, the sink and the fridge, placing these in, you guessed it, a triangle formation. The concept was first devised as part of a design study by the University of Illinois School of Architecture, way back post-war 1940s. Things were pretty different back then. Let's face it, men were the breadwinners and would rather have drunk slow-acting poison than lift a finger in the kitchen. The purpose of the kitchen triangle was to create an efficient means for the cook to easily access the wine. No, it was to purposely access, within a few steps, the main appliances within the kitchen. I personally think that the concept of the kitchen triangle is outdated. Pretty big statement for me, to, for me to make that I think that the kitchen triangle is outdated. So why do I think it's outdated? Well, for a start, we now have way more appliances that we use and access on a daily basis in the kitchen area. Think about it. We have, we have microwaves, we have steamers, we have warming drawers, we have zip taps, we have pot fillers, uh, we have blenders, we have thermomixers, we have dishwashers, we have wine fridges, we have coffee machines, electric kettles. And that's before you even consider how many people will be in the space working, eating and socialising. It's no wonder we've seen the kitchen triangle evolve into multi-work zone spaces to maximise functionality. Just to name a few of the zones that I consider when designing a kitchen and that you should consider when designing your new kitchen space, there's going to be a lot. So here's a few. There's the consumable zone. That's the fridge and the pantry storage. There's prep zones. That's uninterrupted bench space for food preparation. The next zone would be the cooking zone. This is Sammy's favourite part to hang around in because there's always scraps on the floor for him. Oh. <laughs> so what would you include in the cooking zone? That would be the cooktop, the oven, warming drawers, steam ovens, microwaves, everything to do with cooking. That's my cooking zone. Then there's the cleaning zone. The cleaning zone would include the sink, the dishwasher, the detergent drawer, tea towel area, um, pull-outs for detergent caddies, anything that's related to the cleaning zone. Then there's the storage zone, and that would be anywhere where you store your pots, your pans, your breadboards, your crockery, your cutlery, your Tupperware, your glassware, cups and saucers, lots of drawer storage, lots of cupboard storage. Where does all that stuff go? Zones to consider are the appliance zone. This is where the kettle, microwave, toaster, coffee machine, thermomixer, sandwich maker would go. The other main area to consider is the seating zone. This is where all the socialising and eating happens. Very important zone. Okay, so another area that you have to consider is the drink storage zone. This is dedicated to wine fridges, wine drawers for soft drinks or beer. And the last area that I like to consider is what I call the luxury zone. And this is dedicated to the butler's pantry so that you can do the whole thing all over again. 
You can see from all of the activities that we need to perform in the kitchen these days, the kitchen triangle as a concept has become obsolete. So how do you lay all these kitchen zones out and make a functional working kitchen? The truth is it will be different for everybody to suit your lifestyle and the space that you have. Okay, by that I mean how many people are using the space on a daily basis and how are they going to use the space? Are they sitting there? Are they eating there? Are they all preparing different meals at once? The answer to these questions will help you decide how you lay your kitchen out. There is no right or wrong. Okay, so that wraps up. <laughs> okay, so that wraps up our interpretation of the ill-fated and outdated kitchen triangle. If you have any comments or would like to tell us your views on the kitchen triangle, we'd love to hear them. Follow me on our Instagram channel, click here. And if you want to follow me on, I have no idea what the other one is, but click here. <laughs>